What's going on YouTube? Today, we're gonna to talk about whether or not you can drive around with a high stall torque converter. Stay tuned. Before we get too far into this video here, I just wanna give a huge shout out to the guys at FTI. Uh, FTI Performance is where I ended up getting my torque converter from. Uh, they they, do, they are based out of Florida. They actually do some amazing work. And where torque converters typically fail, these guys have done all the research and those parts that are in a torque converter that would typically fail, they've actually gone through and actually reinforced uh, the torque converter uh, fins and, and different parts and stuff like that. So they actually make a great product. So if you're looking at getting a torque converter, uh, check out FTI Performance. Uh, if you guys wanna order some FTI Performance, you can always go to Reigns Precision Motorsports, rpmdenver.net. They are direct with FTI. They can order whatever you need. They can look at whatever applications that you have, uh, suggest uh, what, you, uh, what you should have, and order and ship those parts to you. Uh, also, shout out to uh, Reigns Precision Motorsports. They're the ones that actually did the install and tune of my torque converter, and it has been flawless. So, rpmdenver.net, those guys, they've built 90% of my car and I I couldn't be happier with uh, with the results that I have here so uh, huge shout out to those two guys let's get on to the video so those of you that are my longtime subscribers or have seen some of my older videos uh, you will know that I have a 3600 stall torque converter in my car and this is my daily driver so there's a lot of arguments out there on whether or not you can daily drive a car that has a high stall torque converter. So 3600, not like high, like uh, like you know, drag racing where they have like 5,000 plus stall torque converters, but still, uh, it's a higher stall torque converter. But can you daily drive it? Is it comfortable? Is it is it still usable? And I would actually say yes. If you've never driven a car that has a high stall torque converter before, it uh, the transmission feels loose. Uh, you know, the stock torque converter flashes at like 1200 RPM or something like that. So when you push on the gas, it it locks up, it flashes uh, at a low RPM, and basically when you push on the gas, you feel almost like a direct response to the acceleration of the car. Uh, high stall torque converter, it it feels almost like the transmission slipping. I mean, that's not really the right terms for it. Um, like those of you that know how to drive a manual transmission, when you first learned how to drive manual, taking off in first gear, and you're trying to figure out that clutch, and um, and you know you're you're riding the clutch, and you know you're just trying to get the feel right. That's basically what the high stall torque converter feels like. So. So that's kind of the feel that you have to get used to. Uh, I'm gonna do my best to share with you guys what it's like um, with the high stall torque converter. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna film my dash where when I'm driving around just like from stoplights and whatever like that, just my daily drive type stuff. And I want you to pay attention to the RPMs that I'm having uh, compared to the speed and just know that you know I'm not flooring it so when you see the RPMs fly up to 3,000 I'm not flooring it it's just the the engine is actually going that high because the torque converter isn't locked up so it's gonna shoot up to like 3,000 RPM 2,500 RPM but my speed is actually gonna be gradually increasing but the purpose you know a few of you guys might be asking is the purpose of the high salt torque converter is when I'm at the track, when I hit the gas, those RPMs will flash up to about 3,600 RPM. Uh, sorry, the RPMs will go up to about 3,600 RPM and the torque converter will flash and basically grab at that point and the car will launch. So the idea is to get out of the lower power band, uh, the lower RPMs where there's less power, uh, you know, horsepower and torque, and get you into your power band quicker so you launch faster. Um, you know, one of the things right now is if you have a st uh, stock torque converter, if you hold down the brake and push on the gas, your RPMs will only go up to one or 2,000 RPM. With a high stall torque converter, such as what I have, I can actually hold the brake and bring my RPMs up to uh, about 3,500 RPM, and then I can just basically launch from there. Um, 
there, there's a lot more to it than just like holding high RPM, and just letting go of the brake and taking off when you're launching and stuff like that. But that's for another video. Uh, this one, let's just take a look at what the uh, torque converter is doing when we're just driving around. So we're leaving the neighborhood now. I'm at a complete stop. So this is going to be just normal driving. I'm not going to hot rod it or anything like that, but just pay attention to the RPMs and I'll just be quiet so you can listen to the engine, okay? So just real easy acceleration from a stop. I'm coming up to the main road up here and I'm going to need to get a little bit more gas just to get up to speed to merge in with traffic. But what you'll notice uh, on that last takeoff is the RPM goes up a lot quicker than what the speed would. So merge on with traffic here. That was kind of hard to see. I was turning, so I apologize for that. But um, if you just listen to the engine there, it that when I was talking about you know learning to drive stick and just kind of feeling the clutch, you can hear the engine kind of go up and kind of just hang at an RPM. Almost feels like a CVT transmission. But uh, basically, that's uh, that's kind of what it feels like here. Um, I'll pick back up here when I'm accelerating from a, another stop here, so you guys can see another turn here but we'll see where it goes so rpms so there you go there's that easy acceleration but you see how the rpms kind of go up to upper 2000s and they just kind of hang there and and the car kind of grabs and accelerates on its own um, and you know you can feather the throttle more or less but you know the it's like a CVT transmission like I said before and that's kind of how how it feels to drive so when you're driving along with a high stall torque converter once you're at speed the torque converter is locked up with the uh, with the engine so yes I'm sitting at like 1800 1600 rpm right in that range right now going about 60 miles an hour if I hit the gas right now the rpms aren't gonna float like they did before so like if I need to just speed up a little bit it's just like driving your car with your stock torque converter so once you're at speed it feels completely normal the only time that you're actually going to feel a difference with the high stall torque converter is in lower RPMs. Um, there are some situations to where uh, you could get, I guess it's called pulsing, um, but it's it, it's basically the torque converter locking and unlocking, and that can actually be fi uh, fixed or adjusted uh, with a tune. So I mean, if you don't have your torque converter, your shift points or whatever set right, you'll get uh, pulsing, and basically it looks like if you're just tapping the gas. So I my car it's it doesn't do it because we have it set right but if, if I can try to mimic it by just pumping the gas here you'll see a little blip like that and you'll actually hear the engine kind of just go high low high low high low and basically that's the torque converter just just engaging and disengaging but it through a proper tune you won't get anything like that. Uh, but that's the best way I can simulate it just by tapping the gas pedal right now because I can't get my car to do it otherwise. Okay, the last thing I wanna show you is actually taking off uh, you know, a little bit more aggressively. So I'm gonna not floor it here, but I'll get a little more aggressive and just watch the RPMs flash high. Okay, a little too hard. But if you... Uh, if you kind of notice how quickly the RPMs went up compared to the uh, to the speed of the vehicle, it's kind of hard to tell there because the wheels ended up spinning. But those RPMs climb the first 3,000 very quickly to get you into that power band. So th that's that's the benefit of the torque converter. I went from a 4.70 to 60 
to a 3.90 to 60 just with a torque converter. So if you're looking for that little added edge that's gonna increase your acceleration, the torque converter is definitely where, where to go on this. Um, I know a lot of you guys are, are swearing by the pedal commander for the throttle response, stuff like that, but when it comes down to it, I would actually probably put my money towards the torque converter rather than a pedal commander. So yeah, that was kind of a long video. Thanks to uh, all of you guys that made it to the end, but uh, I felt it had some pretty good information there for people who didn't know anything about the torque converter. Uh, anyways, like, subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next video. I'll uh, see if I can do something in the way of talking about uh, the strut braces, whether or not I noticed a difference on that. Uh, the water methanol kit, I'll go in a little bit more detail. And uh, we're getting ready to uh, go down to Pueblo to do another race on April 28th. So stay tuned for that. We'll uh, put the race tune on and, and uh, build it up and see if maybe I can kiss the 11-second quarter mile.